the Outriders, once a great and respected division of Mondstadt's famed Knights of Favonius. Today, their numbers have dwindled. In fact, they now have but a sole member, an enthusiastic, determined, and ever vigilant young girl named Amber. Be it by simply providing a tour of the city or tracking a suspicious person, Amber handles every task with the same level of tenacity. She remains dedicated to the ideals of the Outriders in an age that found them becoming increasingly scarce. But why did the Outriders fall from grace? Why does Amber still stubbornly uphold a title that no longer has the clout in Mondstadt that it once held? Many years ago, the man that would become Amber's grandfather was at one time the leader of a group of mercenaries based out of Liyue. They served but a singular purpose, to provide defense during the routine escort missions for the various caravans of merchants to and from the wealthy city. But on one fateful day, one of those missions would go down in a way that was anything but routine. The caravan, rather than being attacked by the usual poorly trained and badly organized bandits, were savagely attacked by a large group of monsters. The mercenaries fought bravely, but were decimated. The only survivor and badly wounded was Amber's grandfather, who only survived by the good fortune of being encountered by a doctor from the Ordo of Knights Favonius. Maybe it was complacency, or maybe they were caught off guard. Whatever it was, whatever the cause, he alone had survived the ordeal. His guilt, unimaginable. Could he have trained his men better? What could he have done to prevent this? He wasn't sure, but what he did know is that he would never again return to Liyue, because there, the shame and guilt of his failure would haunt his every step. Shame or not, however, he owed his life to the knights, and so he traveled with his saviors to Mondstadt to repay his debt in service to the great city of freedom, becoming a knight of Favonius himself. Anxious as ever to ensure another tragedy would not befall a group under his watch, Amber's grandfather founded a division within the Order of Knights, the Outriders. He trained each Outrider personally, and through his tutelage, they would become the trusted watchful eyes of Mondstadt, for there was no task too small or evils too great for them to contain. As time continued to pass, Amber's grandfather would eventually, rather than just serve the city of Mondstadt, settle down within it, finding love and starting a family. This is not to say that he didn't maintain the strict work ethic with the Outriders. His dedication to ensuring those under his charge were always prepared would never falter. And now truly a man of Mondstadt, he came to accept the City of Wind as his home and would do everything he could to protect it. The guilt of his past would see to that. More years went by and his family continued to grow a granddaughter would be born into the family, and her name would be Amber. Possibly as a tribute to the color of the Corlopis stones native to his former home of Liyue, or possibly simply after the color of her eyes. As Amber continued to grow, the two would become especially close. She idolized her grandfather, as well as his dedication to maintain Mondstadt's freedom. She would watch in secret as her grandfather trained the Outriders each day later sneaking into the training area at night to practice the moves herself. She was clearly cut from the same cloth, albeit a bit of a handful. Amber was known to frequently get herself into trouble, but when the Outriders would arrive to investigate, she would always manage to find a way to outpace the ones pursuing her. Amber was seemingly unstoppable once she had a goal in mind. Even if that goal was simply to evade the Outriders, she would see it done. As such, her grandfather would frequently be left to manage the damages caused by whatever dendro slime she would accidentally set fire to that day. The cause of countless incidents, she became somewhat infamous amongst the traveling hunters in Tevat. But despite her knack for getting into trouble, Amber was still a fireball of both enthusiasm and positivity. Her grandfather would take notice of the resourcefulness that she displayed in always managing to elude the outriders he commanded. Deciding she just needed guidance he went on to teach Amber everything he knew, and explaining that all the responsibility as captain of the Outriders could one day be hers. 
Through hard work and determination, Amber became an outrider, and with her tenacity, no corner of Mondstadt would go uninspected. If somebody was in trouble, she would be there. If someone so much as needed a tour of the city, she would provide that service to the best of her abilities. An exuberant streak of red, with the cunning of a rabbit, will descend upon all travelers through the region to ensure the safety of Mondstadt. Diligent as possible in all of her tasks, she went on to become one of the most skillful flyers of wind gliders in all the land, often winning the annual glider competition and taking the responsibility onto herself to qualify other would-be flyers for glider certification. Despite her own penchant for having her personal license revoked for breaking the rules from time to time, the Outriders were seemingly at their strongest and everything was falling into place. One day, Four years ago, Amber's grandfather disappeared. With no note left behind to provide a clue as to why, and his sword and coat of arms left behind in his office, he was nowhere to be found. The heart and soul of the Outriders had simply disappeared without a trace. Amber was too young to take command of the Outriders, and without strong leadership, the Outriders quickly lost their edge. To make matters worse, Rumors began to arise, suggesting that Amber's grandfather had defected to Mondstadt's enemies. One by one, the members of the Outriders began to resign, leaving the Outriders a pale shell of the once great organization. With the departure of nearly all the other Outriders, the organization would be preserved by the Knights of Favonius in name only. Amber joined the Knights to represent the Outriders as their sole member. At first, things would be difficult for Amber. Her grandfather was gone, his legacy tarnished by rumors of betrayal. On top of that, Amber's youth would lead her to feeling a constant need to prove herself to the Knights of Favonius, taking on as many responsibilities as she could juggle to make it as evident as possible that she was a strong, capable knight and outrider. Amber believed it was now her responsibility to take on her grandfather's post as captain of the Outriders, in hopes that doing so would help her discover the motivations resulting in his silent departure. Sadly, this line of thinking would not bring Amber any closer to solving the mystery. For a time, she became somewhat aimless, until she rediscovered a book of fables from her childhood, known as Wind, Courage, and Wings. Among the tales told in the book, one in particular, would give her new life. When the first wisp of wind brushed across the land, birds that yearned for the sky had wings, but no way to fly. They asked the animal god, how can we reach the heavens? To which the animal god replied, you have yet to find that which is most important. As the god spoke, the wind thrust the seeds of a dandelion high into the sky. The birds thrust out their wings, but the breeze was all too mild, leaving them to stumble across the earth. So they went to the gorge, where the wind showed off its wild and incomparable strength. They threw themselves off the cliff and flapped their wings amongst the howling winds until they were able to fly freely in the sky. To the animal god they went to gleefully say, We understand now. All we needed was a stronger wind to fly. In reply, the animal god said, What you lacked was not wind, but courage. It is courage that has allowed you to become the first flying birds of this world. What you lacked was not wind, but courage. It is courage that has allowed you to become the first flying birds of this world. Seeing herself as the birds in this fable, Amber realized that the wind under her wings was never gone at all. She just needed to leap into it, carving out a new path for herself. She thought to herself, there must be something that only I can do. There must be. It was at this moment that her pyro vision manifests itself upon her hip. 
Amber's ongoing enthusiasm for every task, in conjunction with her competence in combat, would not go unnoticed by the Knights of Favonius, even though she is sometimes known to stumble over the established guidelines set down in the Knights of Favonius' handbook. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Probably not something I should say as a knight. I give you my apologies, uh, strange yet respectable travelers. That sounded so fake. Do you have something against the type of language usage prescribed by the Knights of Havonius Handbook? Today, she is known as the Crimson Knight. She's gone on to become a beloved guardian of Mondstadt, armed with a bow, from which she knocks her flaming arrows, as well as her explosive friend and protector, Baron Bunny. The citizens of the City of Freedom feel safe knowing that the girl they watched grow up is now watching over them in return. If or when trouble stirs, they can be sure the Red Rabbit and Baron Bunny will be there to aid in the resolution of any issues. And there we have it. Amber, the outrider of the Knights of Favonius, last of her kind, fearless, decisive, and dedicated to defending the honor of her grandfather's legacy, forged herself into an unshakable force of positivity and reliability in Mondstadt. She will make her grandfather proud, wherever he may have gone, hopeful that her brave exploits will reach his ears, wherever he may now be. In a previous video, I discussed the events that led to Deluc's disillusion with the Knights of Favonius, after an event that also took place roughly four years ago. Did Amber's grandfather also find himself at odds with the leadership of the Knights of Favonius following this event? Or was something else at play here? Is it possible that his rumored defection was as a result of his witnessing such shameful corruption, undermining the integrity of the Order of Knights? Or is it possible that he left in an attempt to bring closure to the shame of his past, finding a lead on what possibly could have provoked such a brutal monster attack? Exploring this leaves more questions than answers. But for now, I'll keep searching for clues, which may shine a light on the mystery of Amber's grandfather. What do you think of Amber's story? I would love to hear your thoughts on her in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell icon so that you are notified when my next video goes live. Lastly, join the Tevat Historia Discord server, where you'll find an ever-growing community providing useful links to Genshin content and illuminating discussions regarding Genshin Impact's lore, theory crafting, and mechanics. Thanks for watching Tevat Historia. May the seven guide you, travelers. Mm.